Yes, she does. Cold air intake on an E46, is it a good idea? Today we'll be finding out. A new filter and some secondhand parts has just the same price as a new eBay kit. Today we'll be using a blue driver. We will be testing the performance and the temperature to see if the stock filter is different than the cold air intake. The important thing today is to get the OEM air box out and the new one in in a quick enough time where our outside um, temperatures don't change very much. Right now it's about 55 degrees, about 10, to, uh, 10 mile an hour winds. Uh, we've got our blue driver pulled up on the iPad. It does data logging and so we're gonna be tracking vehicle speed and the air intake temperature. And then once we do both tests, we'll be able to compare the two. We let the car heat up. Looks like we're sitting around 106 degrees Fahrenheit on our air intake temperature. Now we're gonna go drive around and get a log in and see what it does. So we have a predetermined route that we're gonna be using. It's about a mile and a half long. Uh, it goes on a couple back roads where we get up to 60 miles an hour. Um, and then like right now we're going through a neighborhood. Uh, so we're averaging around 20, 25 miles an hour. Um, we're gonna be using similar speeds for the second test and make sure that we're in similar gears as well and we'll go from there. All right, so we're back. The route took us about eight minutes. I'm gonna start installing the intake and Jordan's gonna go over the data with you guys. Our vehicle speed is in green and our air intake temperature is in red. We'll go over our vehicle speed real quick here. So you can see we got that first corner up to about 60 miles an hour and we dropped down to 40, there was a corner there. We did 40 miles an hour, another corner, 40 miles an hour, and then this was all through a neighborhood with some stop signs and some other turns. And you can see the air intake temperature kind of following this speed around a little bit. Um, that first 60 mile an hour run when we got up going really fast, we saw about 80 degrees, just over 80 degrees, and it rose and fell depending on how fast we were going. Through the neighborhood, it looks like we averaged about 90 degrees, just over 100 right there. Um, so hopefully the cold air intake will see less than that. Now, the cold air intake provides sound and performance, so hopefully we'll get both out of this one. So we've got the intake finally put in. There's a couple pieces here that are custom. So these guys right here, um, I built when this intake was in my white car to keep the intake up off of the back of the headlight because I had the Xenon project projectors on it. So in this instant, it's not gonna make a big deal, but we put them in there anyway since I had them laying around. This is an engine heat shield to keep heat away from the intake. This helped out a lot. Uh, I don't know how anybody else would get a hold of one of these except for to buy the whole entire engine intake. And then I cut a spot so that this air scoop can go right into this little area. And now we're gonna take the car out and see how it does. through our second run and I'm feeling a little bit of a power difference not much but I'm really enjoying the sound it does sound a lot better in here um, unfortunately for the cold air intake the numbers don't look super promising but we can't drop a conclusion until we see them side by side um, what we're thinking is it's breathing better although it's not necessarily colder air because of where it's sitting um, it is breathing better so that's where you'd get the power difference um, and the numbers would reflect the high temperature of where the intake is actually sitting. Instead of pulling it from the OEM scoop, it's pulling it from inside the engine bay. 
But here's our second run. Again, our vehicle speed is in green and our air intake temperature is in red. Um, and then you can see that first 60 mile an hour run. Um, then we drop down to a corner, down into 40, into another corner, 40 miles an hour into another corner. And then again, this is through the neighborhood. So there's stop signs and whatnot. Now looking at the air intake temperature, we're noticing that it does start off quite a bit higher. Um, and then it drops all the way down to 86 degrees during that first run, drops down to 80, mid to high 80s right there. We're consistently seeing it higher throughout, but again, we mentioned that we are feeling a power difference and these are dropping a lot quicker than the OEM box did. Um, so. The only thing that we could do to explain that would be that the car is breathing better. Although it's not breathing necessarily colder air, it is flowing air through the engine smoother than how the stock air box sits. We're gonna have to hand this one to BMW because when it comes to cold air intakes, this one failed pretty miserably. So obviously it's not a race car, so I don't mind it running pretty hot, so I'm gonna keep the cold air intake because I did notice a small performance increase and also, I really love the sound, so I'm gonna keep it. 